Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to another episode of the Golden Rule Revolution. I am Lucas Mack. Thank you for joining. I'm really excited. I have some really awesome interviews coming up. I haven't done a, actually, I did a solo episode earlier this week, but it would have triggered massive <laughs> amounts of people because it was more me getting a lot off my chest. And instead of releasing that, I sat with it, I listened to it. And although I'm happy I said it and I agree with everything I said because I said it, um, it wasn't the energy that I wanted to put out in the world. However, I did find an old talk that I gave back in 2018, and it is more relevant today than it even was back then. So that's what this podcast is. I'm going to toss to um, a talk I gave in 2018. And I can't wait for y'all to hear. So I want to talk about my vision for the world and how it starts with the greatness I see in you. And 80 years ago, 6 million neighbors um, of people all throughout Europe started disappearing. 80 years ago. 80 years ago. Not that long ago, 6 million people of some defined label were systematically executed and and with an attempt to eradicate them off the planet. However, the vision that I see for the world is a world of 100% absolute unity and absolute love for human life, the value of life the purpose of life, the beauty of life. I hear so often the particulars. People want to talk about labels and labels divide us. The minute I see you as anything less than a human soul that is exactly like my human soul, I have separated you and I. And in our society right now, it's pushing labels. It's telling you, take a label. You are your label. You are that particular. You are that piece of data that you fill in on a little comment bar when you sign up on a newsletter, when you go to get your driver's license. Something in society at large reduces humanity to something way less than human beings. Uh, We have a family friend who is a Holocaust survivor And a few years ago, I was at a wedding in New Orleans, and um, he and I got in the most amazing conversation. He was the first, um, he was a German Jew, and he was the first German Jew to speak at the event in Germany when there was a big um, healing in Germany. And he showed me the tattoos on his wrists. I saw the numbers. I don't remember exactly what number he was, but I saw the number that he was reduced to. He said the most profound saying to me, statement to me, and here's what this man said to me. He looked me in the eyes and he said, Lucas, when you reduce people to mere numbers, you have erased their humanity. They are no longer an eye color, hair color, memories, emotions, thoughts, words, breath. They are just a digit void of any humanity. When he said that to me, it rocked me. Because coming in the business world, similar to what I am experiencing right now, is this push for numbers, push for data. So my vision for the world is a world of unity, is a world of no fear, no abuse, no harm to any soul. And the people that choose to be a continual source of pain for others will be checked, essentially checked to mate, where they won't be able to act or operate or move beyond the space that they have chosen for themselves. But the rest of the world will stand as a source of love, unity, and power so that souls can be liberated. Getting back to Nazi Germany, how did... Germany, which was the bastion of liberalism and free thought in Europe for centuries, turn into Nazi Germany. I mean, think about what Germany 
is, was, Germany gave us the freedom of the press with the Gutenberg press. They gave us the freedom of the press. They gave us the freedom of religion with the Reformation. They gave us Austrian economics. They gave us German engineering. They gave us Bach. They gave us Beethoven. They gave us the most beautiful minds of thought and culture at one time until a sickness produced its fruit in that society to where people who happen to have a different name or a different ethnicity or a different color or a different label or a different political letter by their names were no longer deemed valuable in that society. And I believe it can happen again. Every day I wake up and my intention is to keep it from happening. That is my great mission in life, is to keep that from happening. I'm asking you to stand with me in keeping that from happening. A world of love, connection, and passion is a world without labels, is a world without, without reducing people to numbers. A world of love, connection, connection, and passion is a world of human life and value and love and support and freedom and joy, joy. It's not about numbers. It's not about digits. It's not about data. It's not about zeros to ones, ones to twos, fives to sixes. It's not about that. It's not about donation dollars. It is about human life. It is about life. And Candace powerfully reminded me about that today. It is about life. 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 I'm going to tell one story, and then I'm going to wrap. If any of you have ever seen the Oscar-winning film, The Pianist, with Adrian Brody, you'll know this story. It's a true story. I forget the man's name, but he was the most famous pianist in all of Poland. He was Jewish. He was well-known throughout Europe. He played on the radio consistently, and everyone in Poland knew him. When the Nazis came in, overtook Poland, and the Poles, the Polish were at sometimes more brutal than the Germans were to the Jewish people. All the Jewish people got put into the, in the city, got put into the Warsaw Ghetto, and he was in the ghetto. And because he was known, there were some Polish families that knew him and actually took care of him, and he survived. When everyone else was wiped out, he got on the other side of the wall and survived the worst conditions in an abandoned apartment on the other side of the wall where the free people lived in Warsaw. Eventually, the Allies came and bombed, and the, the, the rebels bombed Warsaw and blew part of the wall up, and he went back into the Warsaw ghetto because they were going room to room looking for any Jews still hiding. And he found himself in this old mansion, and he's scrambling for some food, and he finally finds this can. And he's digging at it with his fingers. He's getting a spoon. He's trying to open this can to see what's in it. He doesn't even know what's in it. He's starving to death. And he looks up, and there is a Nazi soldier, a Nazi officer standing right there. He didn't hear him. And he looks up, and the Nazi officer said, who are you? And he said his name. He said, what do you do? What did you do before the war? He said, I was a pianist. And the Nazi officer, wanting to validate and verify that he actually was who he said he was, said, come play, come play the piano in the other room. He hadn't played in years. And he sits down, he starts playing and playing and playing, and he starts getting into it so deeply that the Nazi officer becomes touched to the very core of his human nature. That Nazi officer ended up being the high command at the last outpost in Warsaw against the Allied forces. In that mansion, the Nazis took up their command center. So that Nazi officer took care of that pianist by having them hide up in the attic, and he kept bringing them food and bringing them food and bringing them food while they're still being a Nazi. They're still killing people. 
because he was touched at a human level. He took care of what he deemed was his enemy. What he deemed was someone not worthy to live because they were a Yudin, they were a Jew. The Allies come into Warsaw and liberate the city. They're actually the Russians came in. And the, the pianist survives. And then Nazi officer dies in a concentration camp that the Russians had created for the Germans. It's an incredible story. And it has two ends. And this is what I want to leave you with. Because this is my vision for the world, that we get to create a loving, connected, passionate world. The one end was that Nazi officer connected with the pianist on a human level and forgot all the hate and prejudice. Forgot. Wait, what? Wait, who didn't matter? He saw him as a human soul. He saw him as a human being. He saw him as a man, a brother. That's why I call you guys brothers and sisters. I call everyone brothers and sisters. I don't believe in calling anyone else a brother. Everyone's my brother and sister. And I bring you into my family and I bring you into my heart because it changes lives and it saves lives. And it did for the pianist. And if you have not seen that movie, I ask everyone to watch that movie. The second like it, the second prong to the story is relativism. The Russians liberating the Jews imprisoned the Germans. When we treat someone differently than the way we would want to be treated, just because good is produced here doesn't mean good is produced. And this is a hard saying. This is a hard concept. However, it is the reality. I am asking you to join me in this vision of creating a world where we all unite. We all stand for human life, for every soul. This is the world that we get to create. This is it. A loving, connected, passionate world, it starts with us. Loving, connecting, and being passionate about each other and the people that we serve, the people that we come in contact with. We are going to look at human life and human souls, and we are going to lead human life and human souls to the greatest experience that they will have on this planet. I 100% believe it. I 100% believe it. They get to go give all so that they can be all and have all and do all. Remember, guys, there is no can't. There is only will or will not. There is no can't. It just won't. I will or I won't. So join me. Live with me. Be with me. Awake with me. Awaken others with me in my vision for the world and it starts with us i love you guys thank you be it be awake and awaken others i love you all goodbye well i hope you enjoy live that today no labels no titles no division no separation unity in love in humility for humanity to ascend into the 5D earth. That means standing your ground. That means no more compromising on this divisive rhetoric and these victim mindset people who perpetuate victimhood, but standing in sovereignty and healing for all of humanity. I'm Lucas Mack. Thank you for listening. And I will talk to you all in the next episode.